Four. to hear the word of the Lord help us to receive it help us to leave it and help us to become a sign and a wonder that the world may behold and see so that through us the world may be a better place to live we make these prayers through Christ our Lord we make these prayers through Christ our Lord may be seated brothers and sisters Glory to Jesus. We are about to begin the message. No more movement. All the transitions. We no one to hear you make any noise. Today we are going to be talking about the goody pennies. And you know that already. And one of it is adoration. You are before the Lord silence no more movement brothers and sisters please the theme of my homily this morning is signs of total commitment signs of total commitment show me a man who is serious with the things of God with the word of God with his relationship with God. And you will see a man that, the, that God will use to accomplish mighty things and use him to overcome many trials and tribulation. What is the Lord requiring of you and I every day? That we worship him in spirit and in truth. With all we are. Heart, soul, mind and body that we fellowship with him always it is in fellowshiping with him extraordinary things emerge victory strength, joy peace, contentment all emerge this requirement brothers and sisters is both for the young and the old a requirement of single minded focus on God and undivided attention a recognition that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit which we must continually offer to God as a living sacrifice 
every day that the Lord requires and demands is of us. A recognition that outside of God, we are nothing. A recognition that this world that we are in and all its riches and all its promises are all passing away. That the most important thing is God. That I make up my mind to offer my body as a living sacrifice to God. Now this is the focal point of the second reading of today's liturgy. That we be devoted to God. Now this includes everything we are, everything we'll have should be dedicated to God. Anything less than this total dedication, dear brothers and sisters, is short of God's glory. It is a sin. When we talk about a believer's relationship, the Bible, the scripture, is very strong in its exhortation that a believer is to have total dedication to God. The Lord requires dedicated commitment to Him. Now this is what our world needs today. Our world is sick. We just finished a series on the spirit of excellence. So many confusion right, left, and center. And our young physicians are going to be inducted into the life of God. They have first received it at baptism. They have been nourished in it in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Now they are going to learn how to dedicate themselves whole and entirely to God. So that with them, God can be able to change the world and make it a better place to live in. So much wickedness in our world today. The way the world is today is so much, if there is so much evil in the world and we need to correct it. We must not allow the world to swallow us. We must continue to realize that we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, the way for the world to get right with God is now clearly revealed through Jesus Christ our Son. Jesus Christ our Lord, the Son of the living God. And it is the way of justification. The way the Lord has come to show you and I. And we can see that in the gospel reading today. When Peter was trying to remonstrate with him and trying to follow the way of the Lord, the Lord rebuked him. You are not on the side of God. You are on the side of man. My focus, my goal is to do the will of God. To do the will of God, we need courage. We need strength. We need power. And the Bible tells you and I in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 that he called his disciples to him and then he gave them power. Now the power and authority that has been given to you is the power over the principalities and powers, over every kind of confusion that you may become the perfect vessel that the Lord needs to transform the world. The, Bi the Bible tells you and I that the believer is now sanctified because of the mercy, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth on the cross of Calvary. The believer is now set apart and now set free from sin. To, 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 to live in a world that is filled with evil. The believer as well as the church becomes the perfect choice of God to use to change the world. And that is why scripture tells you and I in Jude chapter 1 verse 20 that we must continue to take and make serious our spiritual growth and progress. We must never allow anything to destroy or dampen our holy faith. Because when we are strengthened and we become what God wants us to be, we are able to change our immediate environment. Now this is only possible, brothers and sisters, through the mercy of God. St. Paul used the word in the second reading today, I urge you. Meaning, I implore you. I beseech you. I beg you. Devote yourselves to God. The Bible tells you, I have never seen a man who trusted in the Lord I was ever disappointed or his children begging for bread why? because he has put all his trust in the Lord and that is why Psalmist will say because of this trust that he has in God that I look up to the mountains from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord who made what? heaven and earth it is because of this confidence that scripture will say, with God on my side, I fear no evil. Confidence in God. Brothers and sisters, you need confidence in God to be able to stand before the Pontius Pilate and the Pharaohs and the Nebuchadnezzars. This was, the, this was what I told you last Sunday. And I repeated it yesterday. 
the world will ask you a question what message do you have what confidence do you have to be able to answer this particular world brothers and sisters how do we show our devotion and commitment to God so that we can muscle this confidence remember everything around us is trying to swallow us up everything around us is trying to silence our voice everything around us is trying to confuse our mind everything around us science is telling us that unless I see I will not believe but religion is saying I believe I have not seen but yet I trust in this God that even though that I have not seen the Bible tells you and I that you are called blessed an interaction between Jesus and Thomas he says, blessed are those who have not yet seen, but yet believe. How do I come to believe? I come to believe by hearing the word of the Lord. And by hearing the word of the Lord, I come to that understanding that the Lord has spoken once, twice have I heard. And what did he say? That all power belongs to God. That this is not only just what I hear in church on Sunday, but when I go out every day, I leave it out that all power belongs to God. By the things that, you, that the Lord uses to accomplish, all power belongs to God. By the testimonies that work, that, that accompany your work, all power belongs to God. By deliverance, all power belongs to God. By mercy, all power belongs to God. By protection, all power belongs to God. By intervention, all power belongs to God. By creating a way for me, all power belongs to God. That I trust in this God. I rely on Him. So, the Bible is telling you and I today, how do we come to that point? It talks about the dedication of our bodies. Your body must become a living sacrifice. It is your body that you will use to testify to the world. Your body. Why? Because God demands of it. God is not just only interested with your spirit. He's also interested in your body. When you are here, and you are here, when you are here, and you are there, when you are here, and you are here, when you are here, and when you are here, when you are here, and you are there, when you are here, and when you are here, when you are here, and you are there. When you are here, and when you are there, when you are here, and you are there, when you are here, and you are here. God demands your body. He demands your body, not only your spirit. Scripture says, I will need to worship God in spirit and in truth. In the conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan. He requires your body. Your body must be seen as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Again, it tells you the believer is to present his body to God and God alone. It is with this body that you will interact with the world. It is with this body that you will marry. It is with this body that you do business. You do not do business with spirits. You do business with man because you are in the earth realm. But then you can also do business with the spirit and in the flesh. You begin to manifest mighty dimensions, mighty understandings about your interaction with God. And that is why scripture will say that you are a sign and a wonder. Brothers and sisters, to present our bodies as a living sacrifice means... That it must be a daily affair. That I have been telling most people that come around me and say, every day, the today of every day begins with today. Every day begins with today. The future begins with today. 
the past that you left has begun with today that when you come into today you make a decision that I will live today well I will live today well it means that wherever the body is that it must be dedicated to God from the bedroom to the city room from the city room to the kitchen from the kitchen to the car from the car to the office from Nigeria to Toronto from Nigeria to Atlanta, Georgia that wherever you are you must become the temple of the Lord a consciousness it also means that you sacrifice your own desires what does it profit a man to gain the world and suffer the loss of his soul so many times the world will tell you, look at Peter telling Jesus, no, I do not want you to die. No, I, will want, I want you to stay with us. And Jesus said to you, just shut up, get out. This is not the word of God. The word of God is that I sacrifice my own desire. The desire of God comes first. And you look at, Gets at Gethsemane. What did Jesus say? If it be thy will, let his cause, let, let his cause pass me by. But not my will, but your will be done. So every day of my life, I must ensure that my body tends to the things of God. It requires training. Today you will fall, tomorrow you will rise. The saints that we are celebrating today fell many times. There is no saint in the Bible and the church that we are talking about today, which the church calls the cloud of witnesses. There is none of them that you can say that did not have a witness. All of them, even the mighty men in the Bible, whom the Bible speaks about today, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Paul, Timothy, all of them had what weaknesses. But they recognized that their body is in the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Lord transformed them. I pray for you. May the Lord transform you into a sign and a wonder that they want to see in the mighty name of Jesus. It means that the body lives for serving God. You need this body to serve God. This body must become a vessel to serve God. It is not spirit that will clean the house of God. It is not spirit that will do what? That will actually sing at mass. It is not spirit that will actually play the keyboard. It is human beings who have yielded themselves to what? God. The body must always yield itself to God. The body sacrifices itself to serve God and Him alone and not to any idol. Why are you, what are the reasons for dedicating your body to God? Because it is acceptable and pleasing to God. Number two, because it is what? Your spiritual act of worship. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love if all i say is jesus 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 that's more than enough Say is Jesus, 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 as modern and love. The Lord has captured you that you may become a vessel for Him. The Lord is knocking at the door that He wants you to offer your body as a worship to Him. That you may offer yourself to Him. It means learning every day what are those things that the Lord wants me to do? What are those things that, are, that my body needs in order to serve the Lord? Oh, I, I'm used to fornication. Oh, I have discovered that this thing is not good for my body. It requires wisdom. More than just running to go for confession every now and then. It is for you to understand that fornication will actually destroy your life, destroy your anointing, destroy your grace, destroy the things, the work of God in your life. Adultery will destroy you selfishness will destroy you alcoholism will destroy you drugs to addiction and all kinds of addiction will destroy you so i realize that every day i make an effort 
to actually align myself to God. The world we live in has so many distractions that if we do not culture the mind, brothers and sisters, we will always be in sin every now and then. And to achieve this, brothers and sisters, we must fall, not follow the ways of the world, which I call the city thinking. They will tell you it does not matter. Everybody is doing it. Brothers and sisters, we need to depend on God. For all power belongs to God. The power to overcome comes to what? Comes from God. Before you are sent, you must belong. You must belong to the Lord. And it's from belonging to the Lord you receive power. And then you are sent out to always have power over principalities and powers. So before I overcome, I must first be with God. The world today has its own appearance, its own fashion. And if we allow ourselves to follow the fashion of the Lord, which is very deceptive, the world and everything in needs is passing away. What is God asking you and I to do? That we may not follow the ways of the Lord, not follow the God of this world, Satan, not follow the, the leaders of this world who will deceive us, not to follow the security of the world, not to follow after deceitful wealth of this world, not to follow the pleasures of this world, not to follow the crowd of this world, but to follow the voice of the Lord. And the only way to do this is to be transformed in our mind. The transformation occurs when there is an encounter with God. One experience, one experience in a lifetime can change your whole perception and your understanding. Like that encounter that happened that made Abra Abraham to be called what? Abraham. An encounter that made Sarai to be called Sarah. An encounter that made Jacob to be called what? Israel. An encounter that made Simon to be called what? Caiaphas. An encounter that made Saul to be called what? Paul. That after his Damascus experience, he went to Arabia and then he encountered the Lord in a spectacular way and he returned. And the Bible tells you and I in Galatians chapter 1 verse 24, and they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. Will the world glorify God in you? Remember as you are standing, there are many arrows projected at you in order to make you crumble. But I pray, may the Lord take you and hide you in his inner tabernacle that the arrows from the pit of hell will never silence your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to hear a believing amen. amen. That as you are making effort to serve God, you are making effort to do the things of God, afflictions of sickness, afflictions of sorrow, afflictions of rise and fall, afflictions of criticism will not silence your voice in the mighty name of Jesus. This is what God is asking of you today. The transformation must be interior. It is only when you have an, an understanding from within can you begin to change certain things that you do. Because if you do it from the surface, you will find yourself every day, every day, every now and then making the same repeated mistakes. We must continue to ask God for grace and strength. The transformation that leads one to focus on Christ always. The transformation that leads one to partner and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Learning more about the Holy Spirit. Learning more to do the things that are pleasing to God. The transformation that leads you to love God with all your mind, with all your soul and with all your body. More and more every day. The transformation that leads you to serve God. Like I told you yesterday, service in the house of God is not meant for the poor. Service in the house of God is also meant for the CEO, the banker. You can actually serve the house of God, serve in the house of God. And I asked the question yesterday, where is your room in your father's house? Where is your room? And somebody mentioned 1C. Oh, that means that is revelation. That your own house, your position in the things of God will never be taken away from you in the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the transformation that leads one to focus on what God wants. You can see in the gospel reading today, Peter was rebuked because Jesus had to focus on what God wants, not what Peter wants, not what the world wants. It is a transformation that allows a believer to demolish all forms of argument, cast down imaginations and every pretension that interrupts your knowledge of God. There are so many voices all around. Which voice are you going to listen to? Is it the voice of men or the voice of God? It is now your choice to make. 
It is a transformation that enables the mind not to be led astray, not to be carried away by the praises of men, by the riches of the world but rather to take up your cross and follow the Lord every day. What is this cross? The way of worship, the way of sacrifice, the way of forgiveness, the way of living in peace with one another. This is the way of the cross, the way of generosity. This is what God is asking of us every now and then. It is the transformation that leads one not to gratify the cravings of the flesh every now and then. It is the, the, the transformation that enables the believer to allow his mind to be united with the mind of Christ. It is the transformation that enables the believer to think out, think every day of the things of God. It is the transformation that enables the believer to be united with God in his suffering. That whatever suffering I'm going through today, I'm able to say, I give it up to the Lord. As long as the Lord leave it, I will never be tired. As long as the Lord leave it, as, as so long as God is seated on the throne, this particular challenge will not overwhelm me. I want you to make it a prayer for yourself. Say in the name of Jesus. This trial I'm going through at this point in time will not overcome me. I will overcome it in the name of Jesus. Say a big amen. It is that transformation that led Jeremiah to cry out in the first reading. You have seduced me. That when I decide not to talk, it's like a fire shot in my bones that I must speak. That you cannot close your eyes or your ears or your mouth where there is evil. I must speak about it. Whether the world hates me, let them hate me. Because I heard a voice crying to condemn evil, to condemn all the schemes. And it says, I decided not to what? Speak. There was violence and destruction in the land. But when I decided to keep quiet, you see, evil thrives in the world when good men keep quiet. But where the community rises and banishes such evil words, dear brothers and sisters, you find out that that evil will cease. I pray every evil raising his ugly head in your home. May the Lord cross that leg in the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen, no. I didn't hear your amen. You see, brothers and sisters, the devil will knock at your door. He will always come. If you allow him to put one leg and you do not do anything, he will bring in the second leg. If you do not stop him, he will go to your sitting room and sit down. If you do not stop him, he will go to your bedroom. And that is why many families today are in quarrel, fighting and all kinds of nonsense because you have allowed the devil to take his place. You must stand your ground and rebuke the, the evil one. And that is why a family that does not pray is a family that will always experience so much rise and fall. But you need stamina, stamina, stamina in this world that we are in to be able to overcome the crisis of the world. Evil will surely come. That is why the Bible tells you in John chapter 16 verse 33, it says in the world you will have trouble. He didn't tell that as you are following him you will not have troubles. You will have troubles. But he says be brave, be confident for I have overcome the world. Who is it that have overcome the one? The one who is united with Jesus. The devil has what you cannot give. What he cannot give. And what is that your worship? That every day I enforce the victory of the Lord. I enforce the victory of the cross. The dominion of the cross in my family. I enforce the dominion of the cross in my workplace. That I will not be silent. I will continue to live. I continue to praise the name of the Lord. And that is why Joshua said, which is our slogan for this harvest, harvest Thanksgiving. Harvest Thanksgiving this year of extraordinary life. As long as I live, I and my family, I and my household, everything about me will serve a word the living God and when you step forward you receive an icon of our blessed mother to come to intercede for you so that the kingdom of darkness will not invade your home if you focus your mind on the things of the world the devil will have his way but I pray in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the Holy Ghost every demon tormenting your family your business be silent now in the name of Jesus can I hear a better amen? It comes in different ways. You 
don't begin to do smell smell with the devil when the time comes you must rise it is not you wearing big glasses and doing fine boy and all that the big boy must be in what in jesus it is not doing big fine woman in the things of the world and you are empty when the chips are done you now begin to try to patch and no you must be able to carry fire that while you are sleeping and there's something suddenly chances upon you you wake up and you blast in tongues you blast in prayers lord my god this evil shall be out that even in your dream even in your dream you are confident to rebuke evil am i speaking to somebody this morning that even in your dream because whatever happens in the spiritual world if you are overcome there then in the physical you have been overcome but you will say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I will not be overcome. I want you to open your mouth and say, Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not be overcome. I will overcome the world. I will overcome the crisis. In the mighty name of Jesus, say, big amen. And now what are we doing today? It's all these tacitians, eh? You need some cane, you know? You need some serious cane because this movement up and down is very irritating. You know that? That we are going to be treating you to what the godly penny is. What is a godly penny? Prayer, adoration, sacrifice, obedience. If you want to be mighty in the land, prayer. St. John Bosco told his boys, he said, if you want to overcome the devil, visit the blessed sacrament. Fulton Sheen, Archbishop J. Fulton Sheen will always say, if you want to really carry fire, you must expose yourself to the blessed sacrament. There is no one who exposes himself to the blessed sacrament that it ever gets cold. There is something that always happens to you. You find yourself, you are angry, you are confused. The first thing, you just come into the presence of God, you rent, vent, 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 vent. The next thing, you do what? You are seduced to sleep and that is the best sleep you ever have, even without air condition. That in your home, there are many, there's air condition blowing you, even fan. Some of you sleep in air condition, very chill air condition and what we find, you expose it, you expose your body. But the best sleep you will ever sleep is in the presence of God. But I'm not saying at this time when the word of God is going on, that you begin to sleep. So if anybody is sleeping, just give him a job. Wake up. Wake up. You're in the house of God. Tell the person, say, neighbor, do you know you are in the house of God. Awake! In the name of Jesus. Say amen. You enter. You sit down. Shake and smile. <laughs> if your father is not praying, because you are transitions, you have learned the power of prayer. Daddy, they taught us to pray. Oh, there is no altar of the sacred heart in our home. Mommy, there must be a sacred heart altar in our home. Go and read. There are 12 promises given by St. Margaret Alakwe. Given to devotees as revealed by our Lord Jesus Christ to devotees of the sacred heart. Do you know that prayers can protect your sons and daughters? That it becomes a protocol that you send that before your children arrive at their destination it is there that work, it is that prayer that welcomes them and it builds a garrison around them that do you know why children are seated in a class they are coming from different homes and different altars do you know that different altars you know that your child was what very intelligent very wise he came into the classroom that what happened to him that all of a sudden he said, doing what? Doing badly in school. A wise mother will say, no, I need to take him to the priest. First, I will do my assignment as a mother. You wear your garb, your mantle, as what? A priest of your home. Then after you are prayed, then you go and join faith to the priest, and the priest anoints them. Then when your child goes back to school, overtaking is allowed. True of us. 
that when he gets back to the class, that child that was not doing well, all of a sudden becomes a first in the class. I pray for your sons and daughters. I have called you light. Wherever you go, be a light in the mighty name of Jesus. Be a light in the morning. Be a light in the afternoon. Be a light in the evening. Even while you sleep at night, may angels minister to you. May power, may God's presence arise and comfort you that the evil ones will never anoint your head in the mighty name of Jesus. That you are traveling. Oh God, we are about to travel. Let your mercy and goodness follow us. Goodness and mercy are spirit. They, 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 what? they escort you. Not align the forces of hell. Do you know that this is the ember month? That there are many altars crying for blood. But I decree and I declare that in this ember month, none of your children, none of your families, will, any member of your home will never die suddenly if you believe, shout a bigger amen. You will never Lord, you will never fail. You will never, never fail. You are the Lord. You will never fail. One more time. Your business is going down. Or oh, your children can say, Daddy has been paying our school fees. What is happening to our father? And they come and they tell you, they begin to read the word of God in Psalm 23. Daddy, do not worry. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. He maketh it your lie in green pastures. He restored your soul. Even though you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, you shall not fear evil. For the Lord is with you. His rod and his staff, they encompass you. Goodness and mercy shall follow your daddy. Goodness and mercy shall follow you, mommy, all the days of your life. I have my, my nephew because my younger brother used to pray. Powers! Powers! He used to pray pray and call upon the name of the Lord. The young son has learned. While he's playing, he's playing in the house, he will just run to him. Mr. Mike, please come. come. This is the monsignor of the sanctuary, you know. He will lay his hands upon as little boy. Powers! Any powers? Where did he learn this thing from? He learned it from his father, my brother. This is it, thank you. This is what your children need to learn. Not when things are you things are happening to you now look for one cigar or look for one beer or look for one friend to go and see that no you settle with God in your altar your secret place Lord may you rise Lord may you strengthen me Lord may you empower me Lord may you gloat me may you give me power to overcome the power to overcome let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus this is what God wants you to learn today and this is what the children here will be learning now today in our parish, our children are learning how to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. They're learning it. That Jesus also prayed, Father, Gethsemane, he prayed. He can make loud prayer. Paul, Peter, they all prayed, Father, that when the fire of prayer is raised, the serpent will be exposed. When the fire is raised, the serpent will be exposed. That every serpent around you, every serpent pretending to be good, pretending to offer the best of our advice. This is how the devil comes. He will come and offer the best of our advice and act as if he's your best friend. But the discerning mind, the discerning mind to see, the all-seeing eye, the all-hearing ear, that will help you to distinguish evil from good. Let it rest upon you. Let it rest upon you today, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday. All the days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. There are evil men around. 
That if you can't see, your wife should also see. If, you can't, if your wife cannot see, your children should also see. And that is why a child may wake up one morning and say, Daddy, don't go out today. If you disobey that voice, many fathers today, many mothers have lost their lives. Because the child saw it. But because you are too busy, the Lord reveals himself to those who sit in his presence. He reveals. And when they speak the word, it takes the courage to accept it. I pray when your children tell you things, may you believe it. I'm not hearing your amen though. That you will not use your own self stubbornness and taking things for granted and you walk into evil or walk into error. May it never be your portion in the name of Jesus. So this is what we are doing today. Immediately after this homely now, our children will be stepping forward. No, they will remain on their seats because they are many, they are much. So they will take the out of consecration and will have an interaction with them and after that with their lighted candles and after them they shall wear their medals. And I pray that as you are invested today, may the Holy Spirit come upon you. Parents, I want to hear your amen for them. The wisdom that rests upon Daniel, let it rest upon you. The understanding and the knowledge that rested upon Solomon, let it rest upon you. The courage that rested upon Paul, let it rest upon you. May you find favor as Esther found favor in the mighty name of Jesus. That every day of your life, may you be a blessing to your parents. That you learn the ways of God and keeping the ways of God will also keep you. The secret to preservation is keeping the word of the Lord. And as you keep the word of the Lord, the word of God will keep you. May you find the Lord when you call him. May you experience peace in your home all the days of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bow your heads and meditate on what you have heard. You have captured my heart. Consume my heart with your love. You have captured my heart. Consume my heart with your love. If all I say is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, that's not enough. All I say is Jesus, 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 that's not enough. All I say is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's bother in May the Lord bless his words in our hearts. May the Lord empower us. Fill us with the grace to live out our Christian life very well. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Let us rise now and profess our faith. Credo.